Hi everyone and welcome to Olympics Unleashed TV. My name's Matt Denny and I'm a two-time Olympic discus thrower. I can't wait to show you all the excitement on this athletics episode of Olympics Unleashed. Today I have BK with me, the Australian team Olympic mascot. Now today we're out here in Brisbane at the Queensland Academy of Sport, also known as the QAS. The QAS support world-class athletes such as Ellie Beer, Henry Frayne, Liz Clay and Nara Nang, which you're all gonna meet here on today's episode where we're gonna learn about their journeys and what they do in their sport. I would like to acknowledge the Yugga and Turrbal people as the first custodians on the land on which we meet today. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples watching today. I would also like to acknowledge the 60 known Indigenous Olympians who have represented Australia at the Olympic Games. Now to celebrate Olympic Day, we have such a special episode planned. There's so many things happening across June, especially on June 23rd. It's a great chance to celebrate with everyone across the world but also in Australia to celebrate our Australian Olympians and people who have represented our country at the Olympic Games. All right, BK, let's head over and meet Ellie Beer, one of our Olympians and also the students of the Robertson State School. I'm here with Tokyo Olympian track athlete, Ellie Beer. Hello, Ellie. Hi. Ellie, welcome to the show. Now, I wanna know, you went to Tokyo for the 4x400 metres. How was that experience for you? Oh, you know, one word to describe it was just amazing, to be honest. I got off that plane and I was just like running around, just loving life. And then I remember coming down into the Olympic Village and then essentially when I first saw all the flags and then all the buildings, all the different countries, it was just phenomenal, hey. It all just like sunk in yeah. and like I said, I was I, made, I was just fangirling ever since I got there, so no, it was really exciting. It's always a fun experience to start off your Olympics with a good vibe and walking into the track and starting for the women's 4x4, what was going through your mind in your first Olympics lining up and and how did that race pan out for you? Was it what you wanted? Is it what you were thinking? You know, the most exciting bit it was it was so good having all the girls there with me because obviously I was both super nervous but also super excited as well. I was like walking with the girls but then as soon as I got out to that track, it just all sunk in, to be honest. Like, even though there wasn't a crowd there, I, the atmosphere was still there. Like, you could just kind of hear, like, as soon as you go in there, like, just all the cameras and everything was just all so new to me. And I remember getting out onto that start line and essentially just thinking, Els, just go and have a go, hey? Let's just go, let's have a crack here, hey? Because, you know, it's your first Olympics. I remember grabbing that bat in and I just, I was just like, let's just go, let's just see how we're like gonna it. go. And honestly, I got across, like I passed the baton to my other teammate, and I just, I reckon I could go another lap. So I was like, damn, I would so love to just keep running, hey. Yeah, no, I definitely don't think I'll be signing up for the 4x4 anytime <laughs> soon, but I'm glad you went well at it. <laughs> <laughs> now we have Robertson State School here to uh, give us a challenge, and I'm no sprinter, Ellie, but I think we can maybe get this done. We challenge everyone at home to give this a go, whether it's at home, at a lunchtime, or with friends after school. Alrighty guys, are we ready to have a go? Yeah! Let's start with a warm up. There we go. <laughs> as fast as you can. So we're gonna do some twisty ones. Does everyone know how to do backwards and forwards at the same time? Give it a go. Go, let's give it a go. <laughs> it's a bit funny, isn't it? Let's all do some rotating on the ground. That's what's gonna make you run fast for your relays. Alrighty. I think we're good guys, are we ready to roll? On your marks, set, go! Yeah, it's actually pretty fast BK, not gonna lie. <laughs> Alrighty guys, exact same start as before, all right? Let's get our hopping ready. Alrighty, on your marks, set, hop, go, go! <laughs> Do 
Tell you what, that was so much fun and I think a lot of those kids will be going to the Brisbane 2032 Olympics. Now we're going to go into a Q&A with Liz Clay, Henry Frayne and Nara Nang where they're going to tell their incredible stories and answer some questions from the Robertson State School and I know that we're going to learn a lot from them. Hey guys, I'm here with a three-time Olympian with Henry Frayne, a Tokyo Olympian with Liz Clay and also an aspiring Olympian with Nara Nang. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Um, we're here with the Robertson State School kids who also have a heap of questions for you. Before we start, what is your event and why are you in it? Why are you loving it? I'll kick us off. Um, my event is the long jump and formerly the triple jump. I love the long jump in particular uh, because you spend about an hour to an hour and a half out on the track with the big crowd. You can immerse yourself in the crowd. You can draw energy from the crowd and you get six attempts to win the competition and to uh, do a bit of showboating. Henry, what's your PB quickly for the kids, for both? So my triple jump PB is 17 metres 23, and my long jump personal best is 8 metres 34. My name's Liz, and I do the 100 metre hurdles. My PB is 12.71. I ran that in Tokyo at the Olympics in the semi-final. And I love hurdles because it's such a good balance of everything. You have to be fast, you have to be coordinated, you have to jump, you have to sprint, you have to have good reaction times. And yeah, I think it's just, it's a challenge because you have to be good at all of those things at once. Hi guys, um, my name's Na and I was formerly long jumper, now a 100 meter sprinter and relay runner. I love long jump for all the things that Henry said. And also it kind of feels like you're flying for a little bit. So it's a lot of fun and sprinting, is so much fun because it's just over so quickly you can just send it and then it's over <laughs> so i kind of like that aspect of it too okay well on to my next question now to start with you why do you want to become an olympian becoming an olympian is like the furthest it's the highest achievement that you can have in sport so i really want to achieve it all so that's keeping me going and i know i have more in me so i'll give next year a hot crack henry what what's your favorite thing about becoming an olympian like you've done it three times now what kept you going back what's your favorite thing about that title for me like there's two two tiers personally you know you can become an olympian and then ultimately everyone wants to be an olympic champion and i haven't achieved that yet so that's what keeps me coming back that's why yeah i'm still here and still striving for a paris next year and um we'll see what happens fourth time lucky you never know <laughs> <laughs> and lizzie obviously made tokyo for the first time 2021 yep. What was, uh, what was your favourite thing about getting named that year? I think it had been a long time coming for me and I'd been through a lot of injuries and hard times throughout my career and it was something that I always knew I could do and that year I finally achieved it. Um, I think the favourite thing about being an Olympian for me is that it will be with me for the rest of my life and it's something that I will get to carry, um, that title, but also we're always striving for more, um, so definitely want to go again and go one further and yeah, strive to be champion. Alrighty guys, so Robinson State School has some questions for you. Um, let's start right down at the front. Who's got the mic? Hi, I'm Connie. I want to ask Liz, how has your career as an Olympic athlete helped you in life outside of sport? That is an awesome question. One of the number one things I always tell people is that as an Olympian, as a professional athlete, you have to have things going on outside your sport to take your mind off it. So for me, that's graphic design. And the thing that I take from my sport into my graphic design is traits like discipline, commitment, motivation. They're all things that I kind of cultivate out here on the track. And when I go home and do my graphic design work, I take those traits and try and put them into my work as well. Hi, I'm Peter and I'd like to ask Henry Frame um, you've competed in th at three Olympic Games. Was there one highlight that stands out above all others? It's funny because when I was at the start of my career and I went to the London Olympics in 2012, I was in my early 20s and I thought, what an amazing experience, but the next one will be just as good and the next one will be just as good. But to walk into a full stadium in London with uh, 60,000 people, I think just that first moment Truly becoming an Olympian was the most special for me. I'm Alex and this question is for Na. How, how do you focus when running in front of a big crowd? Yeah, that's a really good question. Originally, it used to be something that was really daunting to me because I was taking on a lot of pressure, feeling like I had to perform for other people. 
but now that I'm a bit older and have a bit more experience, it's something that I really enjoy and I really just feed off the energy and realize that each race is such a gift, it's such an opportunity and everyone that's watching wants you to do well in the most part, so just knowing that, yeah, you're there and you've worked hard and you just get to enjoy what you've been doing. Hello, my name is Matthew and I have a, a question for Liz Clay. What has been your biggest challenge in your career so far? Good question and good person to ask it to. I've had a lot of challenges throughout my career and I think the obvious one is probably a couple of injuries that I've had, namely the one that I've just been through. I broke my foot really badly and I had to have two surgeries to get it fixed, but it's probably also been the most rewarding thing that I've ever been through. I've learnt so many lessons about myself, I've learnt so many lessons about my sport and my training. So although it's been a challenge, I think it will be the catalyst for maybe the best couple of seasons that are coming up, so thankful for it. Hi, my name is Serena and I also have a question for Liz. Um, so we know that Brisbane is holding the 2032 Olympics here, but what does it represent and mean to our generation and the ones to come in the activities and experiences they can participate in to achieve their goals and maybe becoming a hurdler or any professional sporting person? Great question. Serena, <laughs> that is a good question. Liz is panicking now. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing because you guys are going to get to experience firsthand what it's like to prepare for an Olympics, what it's like to be at an Olympics. I'm assuming you guys will be either competing or watching in the stands. Um, and there's nothing more inspiring than a home Olympics. Hello, my name is uh, Wacy. Um, so I have a question for Henry. Uh, so what do you think is the most important quality to have when training for competitions? For me personally, it's uh, competitiveness. <laughs> I used to struggle with being very competitive but as I got older I realized that it was also the main reason that I succeeded as an athlete and made it to three Olympics. Probably a close second would just be a have a go attitude. If you don't try you can't succeed. So have an open mind, say yes if an opportunity presents itself um, because you never know where it could lead. Hello I'm Derek. Um, this question is for now. What do you th uh, think inspires you to continue even when you are at your lowest? One of the things that uh, definitely inspires me is not competing at the Olympics yet. It's the only major championships I haven't done. I've done World Relays, I've done Com Games, I've done World Champs. Um, so it just feels like it's the last box I want to tick. And one of my favourite mottos is never quit when you're low, because it's so easy when things aren't going well to be like, oh, I'm just going to give up, but I keep going and yeah. Hi, hey, my name is Max. A response to Henry, what do you have to say to those who are inspired by you? I would say thank you for being inspired by me. I'm glad I inspire you. You know, I hope to inspire people and get out there and have a go because I very much believe that hard work uh, comes out on top over talent uh, if talent doesn't work hard. If you're committed and you work hard, often you'll be able to achieve your goal. My name is Heidi and I have a question for Nah. Looking towards Paris 2024, what are you hoping and aiming for? Well, I'm hoping that I make the team. <laughs> I will need to run an Australian record to do it, so I'm hoping to be the next Australian record holder. Um, in terms of actually getting there, making the semi-final, and if it's a really good trip for me, making the final. And yeah, just enjoying the sport with my friends and traveling the world and staying on engine. Hi, my name is Sandy and I also have a question for now. What is your most memorable sporting achievement? I would say my most memorable sporting achievement was in 2019. We just decided for fun that I would do 100 metres. It wasn't something that I wanted to pursue. I was really enjoying being a long jumper and the sprinting was something that was a surprise and in that year I ended up lowering my PB significantly and becoming the first woman to win nationals in both the 100 meters and long jump. It was one of those achievements where I was like, wow, I set out to do this and I actually was able to do it and I PB'd in both events. So that was really memorable for me. I have a question for Liz Clay. You made your Olympic debut in Tokyo. How, how was that experience for you? 
making my debut was probably like one of the best weeks of my life, I think. Um, something that I'd worked for for you know over 10 years. There wasn't a crowd in Tokyo, but it didn't really matter. I was just so happy to be there. And I think the best part about my debut was when I walked onto the field, I felt that I was in the right place and that I was prepared and I was ready to run as well as I could. There was nothing stopping me and I really felt quite at home. I'm Shirley and I have a question for Na. What is the hardest part of, of your sport? Ooh, that's a great question. I think there's two really challenging parts. I feel like the mental side of it is really challenging and then the physical side as well. So with the mental, it's so late. You know, you have to come out here almost every day, give your best. Some days you're just not feeling it. There's a lot of sacrifices you have to make to be there. And then the physical side, we've all kind of touched on it, is being injured. It's the watching your friends go off to the Olympics while you're doing rehab or you know, coming out to training and feeling really good and then pushing it too hard. And yeah, there's, there's lots of things that make it hard to be an athlete. I could go on forever, but the reward outweighs all of the hard challenges. Alrighty guys, thanks so much. Liz, Henry, Nah, thank you for joining us. And thank you to the Robertson State School for asking so many great questions. I know I learned a lot and it definitely re-inspired me on why I love being Olympian and hearing the different stories from all of you guys. So guys, can we get a big cheer for everyone and thank you to our Olympians for their questions and answers today. Now we're off to answer some questions and hopefully I get them right with Eli and Rainer. Hey guys, I'm in the QAS gym here where myself and many of the other athletes get to train. Now I'm here with Rainer and Eli from the Robertson State School. They're here to ask me a few questions. Guys, let's have at it. How old were you when you first represented Australia? I was 16 turning 17, so that was World Youth in 2013. If you weren't an athlete, what would you be doing? I think if I was to do anything other than discus, I'd probably try and get into golf or photography. I love photography. What is the best thing about going to the Olympic Games? The thing I always love about going to the Olympics is when you walk through into the village um, and you get to meet all the other athletes, you're automatically friends because you, you respect each other for what you've done and how you've got there. How do you motivate yourself to keep going on all the training? For me, I think it's more about discipline than it is motivation because motivation comes and goes, but discipline always stays and keeps you consistent and that's how you really become a, a successful Olympian is by being consistent and, and always rocking up no matter whether you feel good or bad. Do you ever get homesick while you're overseas? Yeah, all the time, especially now that I'm older. Last year, I travelled for four and a half months, so that became pretty difficult by the end. What food are you good at cooking? Can cook a pretty solid steak. Uh, and my favourite meal, which is chicken pesto pasta. Which famous actor would play you in a movie about your life? Uh, I wish I could say Brad Pitt or um, anyone like that, but I think Jason Segel from Forgetting Sarah Marshall and How I Met Your Mother, definitely. How do you control yourself when you're nervous? For me, if I'm nervous about it, it means that this is important to me and it's more about know that it's there and just step into it anyway. What was your favourite movie? Uh, favourite movie would probably be Coco from the Pixar um, films, uh, but any, any kid film is pretty, uh, pretty fun for me to watch. It makes me feel less old. How much training do you do each week? Depending on the type of year, but if it's like off season, usually I'd, I'd do six days a week, um, which would consist of two sessions a day, so about 12 sessions a week. You grew up in a small town. How did you get equipment and coaches to train you? That's a great question. So I grew up in Allara. Uh, I started with my first coach who was in Toowoomba, so it was a 45 minute drive just to get there. So they had equipment there, and then once I started to get better, um, I got support from Queensland Academy of Sport and they helped me with getting discuses and, and getting gym equipment so I wouldn't have to travel as far to do most of my sessions. Do you have any pets? Yeah, so I have two Cavoodles, one named Sadie and one named Frankie. They love fetch, they take a while to get the ball, sometimes I might throw it too far and they don't actually bother going and getting it. But my favourite trick that I've taught them is how to give you a cuddle. So if you say cuddles, they'll run up onto your chest and put their head next to your head and they'll cuddle you. That's so cute. <laughs> what is your best joke? Uh, why did the Olympic athlete throw his reading assignment away? Why? Because his professor asked him to discuss it. 
<laughs> Alrighty guys, thank you so much for your questions. They were awesome. And I tell you what, you should have done the Q&A before because I think you probably would have done a better job than me. But guys, now we're gonna head over to the place that I basically live at, the National Throw Center of Excellence. Let's head over and check it out and learn a little bit more about my sport, discus. All right, everyone, we are out here at the National Throw Center of Excellence, my best friend, the place I spend most of my time. And this is where a lot of discus, hammer, shot, and javelin athletes prepare for the Olympics and Paralympics. Now, I wanna take you guys through it, so let's get into it. All right, guys, I'm here with Ellie. Ellie, I'm gonna mm -hmm. show you how to throw some discus today. Have Ooh. you thrown discus before? Oh, I have. Probably the last time was when I was 10 years old at Little A's though, so. so. <laughs> a little bit ago. Yep. Now guys, for gripping a discus, it's essentially like a nice delicate hold. You're going end of your knuckles around over the rim. Like that? Perfect, and then just relax your thumb. Oh, perfect. The trick is to actually relax. So yep. if I wanted to, I could go without fingers. Wow. And But you just learn how to move to yeah. suit the discus. Before we start, Matt, I was just wondering, how did you get into discus? When I was a kid, I was like pretty athletic. I did a lot of different sports. I started throwing like bean bags and vortexes and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And then mum and I went down to the local throw circle where we just basically, yeah. I literally just tried to shoulder <laughs> it and pelt it. <laughs> and then I got last in the state in grades six and seven. I thought I could be decent at it. Mm -hmm. And then I went and found a coach and just fell in love with how to actually do discus. And yeah, then by wow. grade 12, I won World Youth in 2013. So wow. it was a quick progression into falling yeah. in love with it, so. Oh, that's amazing, yeah. awesome. All right, well, let's, let's get into a stand throw. Yep, let's cool, try let's it out. All righty, Ellie, so <laughs> this is a discus circle, two and a half meters. So I'll show you how a standing throw is done first. Yep. Now, this is essentially your bread and butter, your basics for setting up your throw. Picture there's a straight line from the middle of the circle to the back of the circle. Yep. Left foot on that line, left toe, yep. right heel on that line. Now you right. want just a bit further than shoulder width apart. Okay. And you want to sit. Right. So when we actually go to throw, your power is coming from your legs. I want to see nice long wind, left hand to the back of the circle, right hand. Yep. Opposing. And then we go toe, knee, hip, chest, and then we call it the big T. Right. Throw us throw proud, that's one of our favorite sayings. Yep. Throw us throw proud, big chest up, and release out to the front. Really? Yep. Okay, I'll give you a little demo quickly. Long wind, bend over, and up. Wow. All right, Ellie. All right. Show me your standing throw. Okay. Let's go through the basic setup. Yep. Walk in. Walk in. Left foot on that line. Yep. Right heel on that line. Right heel. Put that right, yeah, across a little bit more. Yep. There we go, beautiful. No worries. Bend over the right leg. Like that? Yes, beautiful. Yep. Now we wind back, pointing to the back of the circle. Right. Like yeah, so we're gonna so. go, can I grab your hand? Yeah, of course. So we're gonna go wind, point. Wow, point. Now even bend over that knee a bit more. Beautiful. Oh. Now turn that toe, knee, hip to the front. Oh. Up, 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 up. Oh, wow. Big chest, there we go. All right, let's see it, all in one motion. Oh my gosh, I need some more strength. <laughs> Big long wind back to me and no up and throw. There we go. Yes! Out the back. <laughs> How good. Walking out the back. Oh, that's right. Perfect. <laughs> so just gonna uh, ask him that. Uh, how do you know that it's a good throw after you perform? Usually you can see them fly pretty well and it comes just mm. so sharp out of your fingers that yeah. you, you just know that there's been, you know, more tension out of that throw than anything else. Yeah. Usually if I'm yelling super aggressively after I've thrown it, <laughs> that's an indication that it's gone very, very well. <laughs> Alrighty, now I'm gonna show a full throw. Same thing, you wanna picture center line down the middle of the circle again. I set up usually left foot on center, but for beginners, right. center line in between your feet. Nice deep set, yeah. and we go wind, yeah and we turn through to the front and we're landing in that standing position. Okay. So all of our throw always comes back to your standing position. Yep. So let's show one more time. So set, mm -hmm. sit, long wind, and one, two, three, big chest at the finish. Okay. Now let's do a couple of drills first, Ellie. Walking in and we're gonna go equal feet aside of the center line no. and sit. Yep. Winding around. Winding around. Left hand to me. Yep. Left hand, other hand. Oh, other hand. There we go. Wind to here. Now we're gonna go 
One, One. two, three, throw. Oh. Beautiful. Oh, okay. We'll I'm throw you in the deep end. Let's see if we can do it. <laughs> okay. Biggest thing with discus is safety, so I'm going to get safe oh. behind the net. Alrighty. So feet across centre line. Yep. Sitting. Sitting. Wind, long, big Wind. posture. And one, two, three. Whoa. Beautiful. Oh, stay in. Oh, I did stay in. Out the back. <laughs> yes. Out the back of the circle. Oh, nice. Sorry, there we go. <laughs> All right, do you want me to show you how it's done? Yeah, why not? I'll get behind. Yeah, as well. safety. Perfect. Good <laughs> safety. call. Yeah. So sit, wind, and one, two, three. Wow. That is amazing. So Matt, when you're about to perform your throw, how does the atmosphere affect you? Do you prefer like a big crowd like cheering or would you prefer it being quite quiet? I enjoy the crowd, I enjoy the atmosphere and I guess mm -hmm. the intensity of pressure, especially like mm -hmm. at the Olympics where you know it's once every four years. Once I learnt how to throw well, that was what I got hooked to was mm -hmm. doing it really well when it counted and, and performing at those major championships. Oh, amazing. Yeah, well, thanks to Ellie for joining me. Guys, I hope you learned something about discus today um, <laughs> and hopefully Ellie did. Oh, I definitely did. Hey, I think I might become a discus thrower. Yeah. <laughs> might get away from the forwards and come here. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thanks for joining in our discus session, guys. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this athletics episode and we hope you tune in for next term's fresh episode of Olympics Unleashed TV. Until next time, stay safe, keep active, and make sure you have a go.